Hi, welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and executive coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups, and today I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies and actionable steps to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence, and develop your career well-being. Ready? Let's do it. Hey there. Welcome. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. It has been an eventful few weeks in my world, and I'm going to share what's been going on, but I'm also going to share why it ties into today's podcast topic. So first, I think I mentioned last week that my article was published in Fast Company on ageism, and it is still getting a lot of traction. And I have clearly hit a nerve, my friends. And I say good, because we need to shine a light on ageism, because without awareness, we can't have change. And while ageism is happening at the 50 plus, and in this case, I'm seeing it as young as 40, it also at times happens at the 21 year old level too, where we're deciding that people are too young to be able to have experiences. So ageism, I'll put the link in the show notes to the article. It is focused on ageism for the more experienced worker. Um, The last time I checked off of my own profile, it was shared over 18,000 times. That doesn't include what was shared from fastcompany.com, what we shared on Facebook. I mean, it's just been blowing up and that just gives me a lot of joy, meaning that I'm putting work out into the world that people are finding value and it's sparking conversations with them. The next thing is I received an invitation to be interviewed on one of my favorite podcasts. So more details coming soon around the time where that podcast is going to drop. But if you've been listening for a while, you know I say that you have to celebrate And when I got the call and then did the interview at each step of the way, I just took it in and took in, you know, this journey, what I've created, what I've been networking and meeting people on and just getting this work out into the world. You know, I'm I'm such a stand for improving corporate culture and improving the way that we treat each other and how we can be effective and strategic and still be profitable and productive and productive and not necessarily have the culture that we've had for so long, which I know many of you, either if you're my client or if you're emailing me or direct uh, messaging me, you know, you you share the same thoughts that we have to change culture. And as we're coming back from COVID and as more and more companies are starting to think about their hybrid schedules, and some of them are not thinking about their hybrid schedules, they're just demanding that people are coming back five days a week. We need a pause and to sort of like reacculturate everyone. And again, that's what that's what this work for me is about is like, how do we treat people better? And when we do, we're going to have a a more retention, more morale. We are going to have increased productivity, increased collaboration, and people are just going to feel better about themselves along the day. I mean, just, just think about if, if you leave your job where you spend how many hours a day, whether you're in, you know, your home working remotely or whether you're actually going to a physical establishment, if you spend so many hours of your day not feeling good about the work that the work environment that you're in, and then how does that spread to the people you love and the people you live with, right? So this is why it's so important to me. And bringing it back to today's topic, you know, I was able to get away for a few days with four of my friends who are also fellow small business owners and entrepreneurs. We rented an Airbnb in Black Mountain, North Carolina, which is, um, if anyone knows, it's in the greater Asheville area. We had time to write, to discuss, talk about business strategy, and it also gave me time to get some trusted feedback from other successful entrepreneurs. You know, it's funny, there are so many benefits for me being a small business owner and working for myself, but one of the things that I miss so much about working in corporations and work with other people is I miss connection. I miss community. I miss collaboration and I don't have peers. So while I have amazing freelancers who definitely support the technical parts of my business, it's not the same thing as having a peer or a coworker or a strategic sparring partner. And I found over the last five years that I have to carve out time to meet up with my peer group and share, you know, strategy, support, stretch, sometimes stress too. 
And I share this with you because even in your environment, even if you do have coworkers, or maybe you're still working from home and you're not necessarily seeing the people beyond those that you live with and we're seeing only people on screens, is find a way to, through a business sense, meet with others if that feels right for you so that you are up in your game. You are being reinvigorated by the work that you're doing. I found it to be so important and it has to be done with some frequency. And again, it brings me to today's episode topic because I was there, I kept thinking, okay, it's Thursday, I'm not working. Wait, I'm not supposed to be working. I don't have any calls today. I don't have anything place I need to be. It's not Saturday. My, like there was this feeling of like, am I in trouble? No, but I, I planned for this. Like, so having that idea of a day off when you're in, when you're working so hard for so many days, whether you're an entrepreneur or working for a company, sometimes having a day off in the middle of the week feels a little bit weird, but I had time to think I had time to strategize, but I didn't have an actual output, a provable, tangible output beyond lots of good sketches and thoughts in my notebook, some writing I did on my laptop, right? It's crazy because shaking a mindset has been such an evolution for me that I've definitely improved over the last five years, but sometimes I feel guilty when I don't have a tangible output. And this is my version of productivity guilt. I see clients, I lead workshops, I host a podcast, I create content, I create thought leadership content for the industry and clients. I'm invited to speak on other people's podcasts, but I can still fall into this feeling of guilt that I should be doing more because you may not see my work until it drops, right? There's this like this drill sergeant that still sometimes runs around rampant in my head. That's like, are you doing enough? And it's very reminiscent of when I was employee, an employee and my clients tell me that they have the same experience. We are in a world in which we are always seeing what other people are doing. We're seeing what they're posting in our various feeds. And we have this tethered feeling to others seeing what we're doing and the perception that we have to be doing because when we work in a role that doesn't produce a tangible output, what are they going to think? We're going to get anxious. So my clients, again, tell me they have the same feelings at times. And I've spent most of my career working in strategy, research, marketing, startups, and the tasks and the work that I was doing on a regular basis, the value that I was creating on a regular basis wasn't necessarily seeable. You couldn't see what I was doing, right? It might take two or three weeks to produce a strategic approach to a particular initiative. So if you came to my office you would see my whiteboard, you'd see there's work there. You know, perhaps if you check my browser history or the time spent on any of the databases of syndicated research, you would see that I was working, but I hadn't actually prove it to you. And this always for me led to this feeling of like, I need to do more to show that I'm working and I'm producing something. So when we live in this world where everybody wants to see what we're doing all the time, and we also volunteer for that by putting our lives out there through social media that people want to see progress. They want to see behind the scenes. They want to see the milestones. We're, we're retraining ourselves for this constant level of output. So tell me if any of these things sound like you. You think there's something wrong because you can't get it all done. Or you feel that you're not doing enough, that you need to do more, which is you know the examples that I gave. That's where I come from a lot. You feel like you have to do more. If you could just do a little bit more, it would be okay. One more thing, then you'll call it a day. And then you never feel okay with what you choose. So if you choose that I've done enough, I've worked a full day, I'm going to now rest and enjoy my evening or watch a movie, you don't feel good about it because the other side of you is going, well, maybe I should get ahead of tomorrow's workload. Maybe I should start working on Sunday night and start sketching out the week to get ahead of it. It's a really tough position to be in, but we all have collectively done this to ourselves. And then, of course, leadership in many companies are also expecting the same thing because they start emailing over the weekend or, you know, after after normal work hours. So all of this falls into my version of productivity guilt and productivity guilt is pretty self-explanatory, right? It's a mindset that you're feeling bad because either real or perceived, we think that we're not creating, doing, achieving or working hard enough. It's the guilt for not doing something. It's also the guilt for not being able to prove that we did something. 
And then we're questioning ourselves and thinking it's not enough. We have a sense of guilt that we should be doing more. And we think that everyone around us is doing more. And therefore, we're not measuring up to the standards that we're falling behind. And that everyone else is doing so much work, we start to judge ourselves. And this leads to a lot of really unhelpful behaviors and thoughts. So as an entrepreneur and a small business owner, as I shared, I often think that, okay, if I work this weekend to get ahead on some things, that might be the best choice for me. That might be the best choice to reach the goals that I've set for myself. But other times it's actually the worst choice for me because I can't think and creativity has left the building folks. So I always say if If you're hustling and it comes from a place of like nervousness or anxiousness or graspiness and you're hustling, yeah, no, sit down. If you're hustling and you're thinking you're excited and you're inspired and you want to get it done and you feel in the flow and you want to hustle, that's the energy to follow. But when it's coming from that place of lack or never enough, it's going to show through in your work. You're going to spend a lot of time trying to get the work done. The work may be mediocre or okay, but the impact on yourself is going to be detrimental. The other way that I see this show up is through this perfectionism, right? So there's this idea that I need to both keep up with the level of work and be perfect. And because I'm afraid you're going to judge me, either the quality of my work or the output that I put out there, I don't want your feedback. I want to control everyone's opinion. I want it to be perfect. And because I keep tweaking, I don't launch. I don't ship, as Seth Godin would say. So I delay, and then I have this productivity guilt because I don't have anything tangible to put out there. I recently heard Dolly Parton in an an interview distinguish between perfectionism and professionalism. And I love this. And this is my takeaway from what she said, that the idea of you being able to maximize a standard You want to be professional. You have a high quality of standard. You want the work to be good. That is professionalism. And you don't let perfect get in the way of good. So you're not worried about, well, what will everyone think? You're just making sure that you're holding to your own standard and quality. And I love that that difference between perfectionism, not helpful, professionalism, I'm all in for. And then another super unhelpful behavior or thought is when we go into the comparison game, right? You are comparing your insides to other people's outsides. And trust me when I tell you that you have no idea what other people are thinking unless they tell you. And then here's what happens. I'm not who I think I am. I'm who I think you think I am. Oof. Trust me. You have no idea what other people are thinking and you will have this productivity guilt continue to linger. We are taught to work hard and then we will get results, but there's rarely talk about the rewards that come from rest. We only talk about the rewards that come from work. What would happen if you took a walk or exercise without your music or without a podcast? If you allowed yourself to just think, what if you allowed yourself to be bored? What would happen from that kind of brain rest? That's what we're talking about, that we think that only if we're hustling is there cash and prizes at the end of the rainbow. And sometimes there is cash and prizes, but more often than not, there isn't. It's just we put this intensity on ourselves that we need to be constantly working. And then there is this rest, but then we have this productivity guilt that we're not working, right? So you see how we're constantly in this cognitive dissonance that doesn't really serve us. All right. So what do you do about it? Well, you might need to take some time out, right? That would be the first thing. You don't need to do anything. Your body requires rest. And we know that our brain is most strategic in its problem solving. The prefrontal cortex is all fired up, right? That's that's right over your eyes, the forehead part of your brain. We are most creative when we have time and space and time to think. And this is what rest can look like. I also know that my best thinking tends to happen in the warm weather, which living in New York City doesn't always happen. Occasionally you might hear the sirens in the background as I record a podcast, (laughs) but I can sit on the beach for an hour or two and do nothing. Watch the waves, flip through a magazine, do like a light beach read, but then it's like, woof, right? I am a writing machine. I can't write fast enough. It just flows. But having that downtime, which is why meditation works so well, folks, having that downtime really sparks my creativity. 
And I'm here to tell you and remind you that every brain is different. There isn't a productivity or a mindset hack that is going to work for everyone. So reading all the books and getting the tips that may not work for you, and then you feel bad because you read the book, but you didn't take any action. It doesn't work that way. We rely on tips and productivity hacks and use those as suggestions, but we can't fixate them on and being the thing that's going to fix us because what works for someone else doesn't work for you because you don't have their brain and they don't have your brain. So some of us need routines and some of us are best when we're in the flow. For me, I have found that there is not one way that works for me. And at different points in my career and different points in my project cycle, I need to deploy a different solution. There is not the perfect productivity hack that is going to keep me productive with the perfect amount of work and output and rest. It changes. And I want it to be perfect and I want to lock it in and I want it to stay that way. And it doesn't. So take notice, make notes. When are you at your best? When are you not at your best? Here's a few things that I also like to think about when I'm thinking about getting three things done. We've made it clear that we're trying to get our rest and we're building rest in first. I know, I know. But what if you built rest in first and then built your work around that? Just a suggestion, maybe something to aspire to. I also know that when I do my version of a hackathon, I have to rest. I am not a marathoner. I am a sprinter. I am a glorious sprinter. I do not like to integrate. I like to work a clip. I may be five hours head down, work, 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 then I'm done. Somebody else might want to work an hour, take a little break, work another hour, take a little break. Every brain is different. At different times, you need different things. So be open to that and and don't you know punch yourself in the face and be like, why can't I do it this way? Or why can't I be more productive? You have to think about how did you get enough rest for last night? Are you properly fed? Did you get exercise? What's going to be best for you today to be the most productive and then rest when you need to rest? The next thing is also... I don't like to have something hanging over my head that doesn't feel like it could overwhelm me or it doesn't feel schedulable. So what I do is I make sure that if I'm going to put it off and it's like, let's say, enjoy my weekend, I make sure that it's on my schedule for next week. I make sure that I've blocked the time and I don't have a detailed to-do list. I put it actually into my calendar. So I block off time that I need to write. And that's, it looks like an appointment in my calendar. I schedule it ahead of time, which gives me the freedom to enjoy today, knowing that I've made ample time to get the work done at another time. And then the other thing is like, we're often unmotivated or we're in a delay because we're thinking about a future that's worse than today. We're thinking about like, ah, to get this done, it's going to be so hard. So we're thinking about a future self that's in a worse place than we are today. And that's not going to motivate you. You want to be thinking about the possibility of it being done or doing the work and being in ease, finding the thoughts like focus and determination and productivity, the things that are the thoughts and feelings that are going to work for you so that you can actually motivate yourself, but thinking about a future that's better than what you're sitting in right now, right? Because if you're sitting in a dirty diaper right now, it feels really hard to think that that's going to be better. You want to be thinking about a future that is better than where you're sitting right now. And then you want to also remember that there's the fun of the dopamine reward cycle, that you get a little hit of dopamine each time you complete a, complete a task and you cross it off there, your list. There's a sense of accomplishment and that may also help your motivation. And then the list in like wrapping up, like we are all different. And just because you let read the latest book with the latest hack on here's how to do it, don't aspire to what's detrimental for you just because you read it or heard it on a podcast. This is where working with a coach can be really helpful because you can have you know, the thoughts that are going to help you to take action, having an accountability partner, shape the actions you need to take and work towards the results you want. Okay, folks, I would love to hear from you as to what you're doing around productivity and productivity guilt. Feel free to share your tips at hello at jillgriffincoaching.com or you can get me on Instagram at jillgriffinofficial. Before I go, I do want to talk to you about your career strategy and what are you doing to build the next phase in your career. Do you have a plan? I look at strategy in a couple of different ways. We need to get super clear on your strengths, your skills, your values. What does well-being mean for you? What is what, what purpose are you driven towards? Getting clear on all of that 
is what I call your career strategy. Really being clear on your career identity and then layering it into a strategy to know where you want to go next. And I don't mean a strategy like once you lay it out, it's all going to be perfect and that's the way it's going to happen. But without a plan, you plan to fail. So who is helping you with this? Because I would be honored to help you. Check out the details in the show notes where you can schedule an appointment to see if either my private one-on-one coaching or my group coaching is right for you. I'd love to meet you. All right, friends, I appreciate you so much. Thanks for joining me this week and I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this and you want more information, go to my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. There you can find information on how to work with me one-on-one or my group programs, or even bring me into your workplace. I'll put the link to my website in the show notes. But hey, listen, before you go, do me a favor, rate and review this podcast because it definitely helps me get the word out to people everywhere so that they can also thrive in the workplace. All right, friends, I appreciate you. I'll see you soon. Thank you.